I wanted more substance because I think that's what my music is about. It's all about substance. Best thing about it is your supporters. Without them, obviously, you, you can't go nowhere. I have trouble talking about certain things that I rap about. That's why I started music in the first place. Don't think the same. They think just rap. I do rap, so I should only listen to rap. But I don't really think that. I think if you're a musician, you're an altogether artist. I don't see the point in getting a label. I'm not anti-social, but I enjoy being in the middle of nowhere, just by myself in a house with nothing around, you know? A lot of my songs are just a bit depressive anyway. <laughs> Without me meaning them to be. First of all, thank you for your time. And how are you so far right before your release? I'm good, man. I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm so excited for this release, especially this one. Very, very excited, man. And why it is so special? I, obviously, I released Never Been Ordinary, my last one. And I think I kind of rushed it a bit too much. It was good. It came out well. But this one, I've put a lot of time into it, you know. So just excited to get it out there, let people see it. You grew up in a generation of musicians where it's quite easy to get spotlight on your work. Mm -hmm. It went quite fast that people recognize what you're doing. And was what this maybe also some of the facts why the first release was like it was? So never been ordinary. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think people were just excited to see what I have to offer kind of like mixtape wise, you know, because I didn't really, I didn't have any tapes out. That was my first one. Um, so yeah, definitely, yeah, hundred percent. But I think with this one, it's more of it's more like a body of art, you know. The last one was good; it was good vibes, but this one's serious, definitely. Yeah, the thing is, even when I mentioned your music, it was about vibes for me. It was it was of course a different type of world and and some new inspirations. So um, when you looking back to the success you had there, what was the biggest? biggest purpose the biggest goal you had starting your um work on this new release i think i just wanted more substance i wanted more substance because i think that's what my music is about it's all about substance so i wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a quick little mixtape a little vibe i think i wanted it to be a vibe kind of like a late night drive mixtape that's what i really wanted it to be um And just more tracks than I would have ever put on something. And um, yeah, that's literally what we've done, to be fair. Wait, there's a mixtape, another album. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the time. I wanted to release two mixtapes and then kind of see where I am. Because the first one was all, all a bit of a blur, you know, everything was going crazy. So I wanted to release one more and then kind of see, see how people feel about this one and then go on. So maybe maybe an album, who knows? Obviously, because of my great beard, uh, I'm I'm quite a little bit longer in this whole industry, and the album has a has a has a big had a big imp impact every time when the, when a new artist was releasing one, the first one or the biggest one, the that one that pulls them off. Um, I think nowadays it's different, and and of course you also mentioned that singles can make a career or make starting a career. Why, why are you still thinking about? an album it's mad really i think i think nowadays it's just i think it's just all over the place i think back back in the day it kind of was like you get your albums you get your record deal the more yeah. tracks you have the better right so i think now it is kind of that thing where it's like you can release a song about even being a serious musician and you could just fly straight up so yeah i, I don't think there's any wrongs and rights towards like what to release nowadays, but I think that's a good thing. Can you summarize the the time between these two releases? How it was it for you as a as a as a person, as a private person, realizing that people uh try to, to try to try to get closer to you and also want just to be a fan of your of your work. How was it for you? It's crazy because I didn't start this music thinking that it was going to get to here. So for me it was just like what like what is going on, you know? Um, but I embraced it. I embraced it. And I think the best thing about it is your supporters. I think you start to understand that without them, obviously you, you can't go nowhere. So it was good when it all started popping off. It was really good. It was really good, man. hundred percent. Is it true that you still try to answer to almost every fan and every message you got? I try, I try, man. It's, it's tough, right? It's tough. It's tough. I think. I still try, obviously, I can't get to all of them, but for, for me, it's more like I'll read messages and certain ones will stand out and I'll I'll have to reply, you know, I'll have to talk to the person. Um, 
But yeah, I try I try to get through all of them, man. It's stress, it's stress, I'll be honest. <laughs> stress, yeah. <laughs> can you can you give me some more details? Uh, how 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 was it working? So you, that that should mean that you are 24-7 on your on your cell phone just answering questions uh, or giving response on some you know stuff. What? Before, before it was like that. Before it was like that, but before everything got busy, I was on my phone, I was checking, I could just I would refresh. Because I was so happy to be to for people to be feeling my music. I'll just refresh, refresh, reply, reply. But now it's getting a bit busy. So now I'm just kind of helping the people that need to be helped, getting back to people and that. But yes, it's it's difficult. It was a hard thing to keep up to, you know? Yeah. But you're still the man of community? A hundred percent, always. Always. Yeah. That's why I do this music. This is for, for me, this music's never been about awards. I say this in all my all my interviews. I don't care about awards. Do you know what I mean? It, I would look completely different. This music's not about anything for me. Yeah. It's, it's, it's about, it's about really, I love music, you know? So it's about the community, man. 100%. What was the biggest uh, response you got from, you got from your community within the last time when, when everything was getting bigger? Are they proud of you because you're the voice of the people or, or what, what, what is, what is the feedback? I think they're just happy for me to be releasing. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I think they're just happy for releases. Um, yeah, like I think obviously when I released my daily duppy, I, I got a lot of love from the people that obviously were there from when I was recording three stars in my bedroom, you know? Yeah. So uh, it was it was crazy, it was crazy. And I still remember them people. I've noted them all down. So um yeah, I think it's mad. As I said, it literally I literally started in my bedroom, you know. So to then get Millions of views on Daily Duppy. I think people really enjoyed looking at that. 100%. Uh, having fans is also maybe kind of difficult. Did you have any stan moments or uh, in, in the past? What makes it yeah, a little yeah, bit yeah. I get, tougher I to like, be... <laughs> yeah? Yeah, like... Obviously, what I rap about a lot, you know, it kind of comes with them type of messages. Obviously, like people say the stan thing. It's, it's a good way to put it. So um, I even made a song called Conversations on my first mixtape, and it was a conversation between me and a fan. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we get we get a lot of them. We get a lot of them, but we're here to help, innit? Do you know what I mean? So it's it's not a problem. It's good. It's all love. What do you say? How 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 you can actually uh, do help people right now? Just keep spreading what I spread. I mean, my music speaks for itself as much as it can do because I have trouble talking about certain things that I rap about, you know, because it's a bit. That's why I started music in the first place. Um, but I think messaging them just kind of gives them a bit of light. I think just them reaching out to me and me messaging them back with care, um, I think it means a lot to them. And it means a lot to me, so, yeah. What is the content of this mixtape? Still stories from the past and doing re retrospectives on, on yeah, that? Yeah, retrospective. It's always retrospective. Um, it's not as much stories. There's storytelling in, in a few of them, but it's quite mixed up. So I've got some new vibes on there. It's, it's a massive mixture of music, massive mixture of music, hip hop. And um, as I said, what the way I would put it is late night drive, just play the mixtape on shuffle. Yeah, happy days. Yeah, I can imagine. And what 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 um, what I mentioned is that there's not that much French on this mm. one. Is it right? Yeah, people. The, do you know what it is, bro? Like people, people, <laughs> people get so funny with the French thing because they think that I have to put it on all my songs. But yeah, of course you have. You're French, the kid. It's in of your course. name, obviously. <laughs> Just kidding, oh, but you know oh, what I mean. Of course, of course, of course, and I do. I put them on songs, but at the same time, French, the kid comes from my nickname, which is French. It isn't. Yeah. I speak French, the kid. Do you know what <laughs> I mean? It's French, the kid. That's my name. Um, and then also. It's a natural thing, like on certain beats, if if it comes to me, it comes to me. It's all in the brain. So I, I might think in French on a certain beat, on a chorus, but then I might not. I might think the whole bars in English. Like, it all depends. It's something natural. I don't I don't try and force it. So that's probably why. Looking from Germany to UK or France, it's even quite interesting, even to see what's what's happening there, and also how 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 artists in Germany try to be inspired of what people doing there, rappers doing there. Um, and from my perspective, it was like, okay, this is this is one guy who's who mixed it up 
natural naturally. Yeah. Um, let's let's talk about this topic. But first of all, what is your, what is your what is your uh, when you have an eye on on French mar music market and UK market, do you see any differences that are very important? Differences what between them? Yeah, between them. Um, between the scenes, between between everything. Yeah, I think they're just two. They're two very different cult. I mean, they're not two different cultures. I'm, That's a I, fact, right? Yeah, they they they're similar. Like obviously, they're right next to each other, France and England. And I think Europe in general, we all kind of it all kind of is the same culture. I just think, I think we mix it in different ways. It's it's as if we mix the same culture but in different ways. I think if you get what I'm saying, it's weird. Yeah. But, um, Yeah, the music in front, and the thing is with European music is everyone bounces off each other. So it, the trend might be the UK now, and everyone's locking onto that. But say the trend is Germany in two years, and everyone will be doing that, but putting their own twist to it. Um, that's how I see it, and I think it's really good. I think it's brilliant, to be fair. What's inspiring you for your music? Uh, as in... All together, or just like a, an artist, or yeah, as an artist, as an artist, and because of it, the, my thing is because of this mix of living living in France, living in UK, having having a brighter mindset on music, on yeah, on, well, on, on cultural impact. I think I just music inspires me. <laughs> I just I just love music. I I can't say any different. I love music. I've been around music my whole life. I've only just recently started actually doing it myself so yeah I, i'll say that i'm inspired by music i'm inspired by a lot of different music though like i listen to rock rap how i listen to absolutely everything so that might play a part in um in what inspires me when i'm making songs probably and, and that's, that's interesting how important is it not to listen only to rap music or to different styles but but just to get over it i think it's important I think it's important if you're a musician. I do think it's important, but obviously a lot of people, you know, don't think the same. They think just rap. I do rap, so I should only listen to rap, but I don't really think that. I think if you're a musician, you're an altogether artist, you know? So, yeah, I try and listen to everything. Would you, would you say you're still deep into what's happening in, in, in the French rap scene because of your language advantage? Um. Yeah, I mean, obviously, it was easier for me when I was living there to keep up with everything. Yeah, it's hard to keep up with things in the UK, and I live here, so <laughs> keeping up with France is difficult. But I do try. Obviously, like I used to listen to a lot of artists there, uh, and being able to get on a track with Jul as well was the the craziest, one of the craziest moments that I've had so far. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, I'm trying to keep up. I'm trying to keep up. They're good though. They're good stuff over there, man. Because I think it could bring you in a good position that you have you have an eye on all of these um, business wise markets or maybe maybe competitors or you know what I mean and also musical inspirations. Um, do you see that like this? Because that, that that you have a little advantage that you that you inspired and maybe maybe um, um, about about both countries and all of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh... I don't know. I think if I lived there and I started off in, I don't think so. I wouldn't say a massive advantage. I'd say you could put it into an advantage, a business way, but yeah, it's not. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not really that to me. Do you know what I mean? It's not really like that. Like I, t I try and tell everyone, and this is no lie. I just make music, bro. <laughs> it's as simple as that. I make my music. People like it. They can listen to it. You know. So um, when it comes to the business stuff. I leave that to my management. I, I just make my music, bro. I just make my music. And if they like it, they like it, you know. But it's a great bridge. It's a really good bridge, UK to France for me. It's, it's, it's very good because I obviously still have supporters in France from when they listen to my French stuff and where I live there. Yeah, so yeah. It's good for that. So you have France in both countries, uh, fans in both countries, right? Yeah. Or yeah what yeah. would we say? How 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 looks uh, how 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 is the how is a typical French kid fan like? What what is it looking like? What would you say? Is he, oh, is, he, is he coming I, from your from your same neighborhood, or is it is it just about, yeah, about, obviously about Essex, the topics you you have? Yeah, obviously Essex. Like you'll see a lot of French the kids in Essex. 
like where I come from in, in the yeah. UK, all the slick hair and, and all this. But like, I think all in all, it's mad mixed. Like even at my shows, I go to the shows and it is the strangest group of people you'll ever see. Honestly, it's so weird. But I think all in all, probably my area, yeah, you'll see a lot of a lot of um, inspired kids. It's funny. Even funny is that in the past it was there was even more differences between let me say we are here in Germany to France to UK and I think nowadays it's it's mixing up a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, do you have connections and do you have an eye on the German rap scene and even on some rappers who are doing the stuff here? And See, you have I've connections. Been told, I've been told to, and what I didn't realize is that where I don't ever check statistics is that Germany is like my second most listened to country. Or, oh, really? Uh, which is mad. I didn't even know. I think it's Germany, Australia. So it's crazy. So I need to. I need to start figuring it out. I didn't even realize. But um, I used to listen to a couple. I forgot his name, this guy. Ah, oh, what was his name? Crazy looking guy. He was like a, this white yep. guy. We have a lot of crazy looking guys here in the rap yeah, scene. Yeah, no, you do, you do. He was, <laughs> was sick. I forgot. His, I used to listen to him ages ago. I'll try and think of it. I'll try and think of it. But yeah, I need to, I definitely need to catch up 100%. Yeah, the thing is, you are you are kind of a, a best example of doing this stuff a little more European wise, a little more international. So I think nowadays the scene is so easy to connect and even to, to get in touch with people who have the same mindset, I would say, because. That, For this one, for my opinion, is quite the the similar, yeah, similar yeah. to to all of these other countries. Yeah. And even even with that with that, it's even also interesting. Like you said, that in Germany, a lot of people listen to your music. You you're doing a tour all over Europe. You have some stops here. Are you excited about playing in Germany and in the can't other wait. countries abroad? Can't wait, bro. I can, honestly, I cannot wait because like I've done, I've done a few club shows like abroad. But I've never done show like tour shows abroad. So for me to, I mean, I've got three, I've got three in Germany, which is crazy. Yeah. So I can't wait. It might, it must be good. If I've got three in Germany, it must be good, man. You're coming to Hamburg, my hometown. So uh, uh, I hope I can, I can join the show. Um, oh, uh, yeah, cool. But, but, but what, what do you expect uh, performing for a German crowd? Energy energy i've heard from other people that the energy is serious very serious energy so i'm looking forward to seeing it interesting is that um your whole you, you did you did your thing in the past and like you said you have a manager who's doing all the stuff about it uh and in this music industry nowadays it's it's even i would say quite easy to do your business but if you have the chance to make it a little more faster then of course big labels are still a thing Yeah. Are you still without any label deal? Is yeah, that yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. We were, we're still without a label, yeah. From the start, from the start. And it's really been about that. I think for me, I think getting a label is more of like the thing that you start to think about when you've had your you've had your go, you kind of you've done your thing, you've struggled, you've done your stuff, and you want to get a house and you want to chill out. I don't see the point in getting a getting a label. I I, I never I want to release what I want to release, you know, when I want to release it. So they're going to yeah. try and stop me from doing that. I don't see the point. Maybe marketing budgets or, or bringing it on, a, on another level or things like yeah, that. Yeah, of yeah, I mean, let's, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 it's funny because it, it sounds like you learned, you learned that, that uh, there's no need for you to, 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 to do it like that. Is it right? Yeah, I think it depends the person. I think it depends the person because there's a lot of not having any money. <laughs> There's a lot of no money when you're independent. Yeah. And it's it's never it's never massive amounts of money coming to you, you know, like all at once. So I suppose a lot of rappers probably like the idea of it. But if you can keep your head down and keep your feet on the floor, uh, I don't think you need it. You've just got to trust the process, you know. Yeah. And so it's another independent mixtape and um I would say it's 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 deep content you you deliver on this. It's 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 about demons uh it's about it's about even even lyrics that that go to 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 the heart yeah if you if you, if you relate it to this um can you describe why you're doing this what what is the reason why you're fighting demons on your lyrics 
oh, why, why I rap about it. Yeah. Because I can't talk about it. It's as simple as that. <laughs> yeah, really? I have, yeah, honestly, I have trouble. I don't like... I don't know. I feel it would feel weird talking to someone about it. And it was very real for me. So, and music is very real for me. So that's why I enjoy putting in my music. And I think um, when the fans relate as well, it's quite, it's quite good for me. You know, it's quite big for me. So, yeah. It's, it's the reason that, that maybe, maybe the, the circumstances where you're not talking about feelings, about demons when, when you're yeah, I mean, growing up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, growing up for me, it was more of a thing where it's like I just get on with it, you know. Yeah. I, I had four. Bro I've got. I had four brothers. Jesus, I've got four brothers. So you know, you don't really. If you go through something, you don't. You don't talk about nothing, you know. So, I think later on when I moved out and I moved back to England and stuff, and I found music, it was a way for me. I started rhyming. Yeah. About about that certain you know subject. And um, it just came so much easier. Came so much easier. Yes, yeah, it's, it's interesting because on one point it's even very important not to show any weakness. And on the other hand, I would say if, if somebody would really go deep into your lyrics, yeah. Um, of course, about the about the whole vibe, it's like okay, there there's something deeper that that even can help me out. So it, you, man. that's what it's about. And as I said, it's it's not about weakness. It's just about real. You know, it's about real. Yeah. Life. Oh, yeah, man, it's crazy. Why you why you named the album or the mixtape No Signal? Because that's just me all over. I just I'm it's not I'm not antisocial, but um I enjoy I enjoy being in the middle of nowhere, you know, just out and about, just by myself in a house with nothing around, you know. That's that's what I love. So for me, no signal just just came like that, and I think it kind of suits the vibe. Of the of the name, and what is the sound of No Signal? How would you describe it? I think you were spot on. I would say retrospective, a hundred percent. I'd say retrospective. I would like, I would say emotional, but if people have listened to me before, they understand it. It's just kind of a vibe thing for me, because um, I, I put it emotional, but at the same time, it might be emotional. It might have a bounce, you know. It might be different. So, retros retrospective and diverse. I'd probably say. And who was producing it? What, what, what were the producers you're working with? Um, there was a few. So I have one that I'm normally always with called Twin. And the reason I like working with him is because he let I, I like putting input on beats. So I like getting involved. And he's he reads me perfectly. Um, so yeah, Twin 2, shout out him. We've had uh, Love Life. I've done a few songs with Love Life before. Can't feel my face and thrill. Um, Yeah, there's been a few. We've had a few, to be fair. Uh, who else is there? Uh, so Doggies, I'm, dogs are coming here, though. <laughs> honestly, every time someone knocks at the door, it's craziness. It completely takes me off. Who yeah, let the dogs out? Had, um, Chucks, Chucks and Honeywood as well. And then I think a few we found on YouTube, because I still do that. I need to stop doing it, but yeah, I still... <laughs> And, and how would you describe this part uh, of work on that mixtape? How easy was it to find the sound, the, the, the beats for this? Yeah, it was smooth, man. I mean, I, I get in the studio and I kind of, I work it all off one melody. So the first thing I ever do on a song is we sort out the melody. As soon as we know like the key melody, I kind of know already where we're going with it. Um, so it's, it's smooth. It's definitely smooth. I think the whole tape was smooth and we kind of ran it so, so smoothly that I think that's why it runs nicely all together. And are you in, in, involved in producing beats or is it just a uh, producer giving you a, the, 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 end, the end product or are you still no, no, doing garage band beats or whatever? <laughs> I used to. Garage band was where I started. Yeah, really? Yeah, on my phone, man. It's funny. But... Um, But but not nowadays still. Ah oh, Jesus Christ, no, not nowadays. It would come out sounding a bit strange, I think. I don't think <laughs> but it could it could be also a statement for some yeah, reason. Could you know be what a I mean? Statement. Yeah, it could yeah. be a massive statement. That's funny. But um with producers, yeah, I'm heavily input, heavily heavy, heavy input on, on the beats while they're being made. 100 percent Because I need it to sound like me. It needs to be different, you know. Yeah. I, I think it's very important, honestly, and that's even why the whole vibe is 
it's it, it, is it is it a little bit depressive the vibe yeah i think i think some of them are a bit depressive i think a lot of my songs are just a bit depressive anyway <laughs> without without me meaning them to be it's just it's just how i write um but i think yeah the sound could be a bit depressive but i like i, I like it i think it's quite you know I, i think it runs quite nicely and it is real it's as real real to the core as it can be so yeah man Talking about features, how was it for this mixtape? So with this mixtape with features, I, I tell this to everyone. Like it's not it's not a thing where I don't get in with people, because I get in with a lot of people. You know, I love I love getting in with people, I love hearing their sound. But I was so locked into this mixtape. I was just in the studio doing it that I, honestly, it didn't even cross my mind. It didn't even cross my mind. So they're gonna have to wait and see, but um, yeah, it was. Yeah, they're gonna have to wait and see. They're gonna have to wait and see, but it kind of runs without it, you know. And it wasn't it wasn't on purpose, but it's just, yeah, I don't know really how to explain it. But do you have still dreams of big, big name features on 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 uh, in your career? The yeah, I think like. I think it goes back to who I listen to. Like, if we're talking about dream features, then I'm featuring Jimi Hendrix, you know, <laughs> which, oh. we, which we can't do. It'd be tough, right? Yeah, it'd be pretty tough. So I think dream features, I don't know, unless he's 50 Cent. Um, yeah, it's it's one of them. It's one of them. But it's never been it's never been where I don't want to work with people. And I don't want people to get that twisted because I do work with people. It's just... Um, It's just music to me, you know. It just it's just music to me, man. I just release what I've done. I get in there and I release my music, and it's as simple as that. What would you say? You 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 made it. You you you're on the level where you where you dreamed of. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If I, I don't have the goals of of awards and stuff like that, so I think my goal was, and I always say, I don't think I'll truly know. The purpose until I've finished. You know? Yeah. So um, it's a weird one. I'm very happy where I am. I can provide for everyone around me. So I'm in a I'm in a solid spot. I'm in a very solid spot. I'm grateful. Even your career started with with um, formats like Mad About Boris, Daily Duppy, where when when a no name can can make it out of that. Uh, yeah. Do you still have an eye on these formats and and what's coming up there? Yeah. I, I mean, I try to, and it's funny because. It was such a massive thing for me. I think Mad About Bars is where I kind of got my name from Kenny. Shout out Kenny. Um, I definitely try and look as much as I can. There's just so much talent coming out now. It's not like before where you, there's like one and two that you would have to keep your eye on. Especially like in the UK, there's hundreds of people that are trying to, that have got talent that are trying to come through these um, these freestyle platforms. So, yeah, and you'll get the times, you know. And do you feel like a role model? People coming to you and asking how you made it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, role model is weird. It's still weird to me. It's still weird to me. But yeah, kind of. I think with the freestyle platforms, yeah. I think I had a lot of success on the freestyle platforms, 100%. So I think people, I've had people ask me like, what I should do? Should I do this vibe? I'm going on there, you know? So yeah, man, in, in some sort of way. The thing is, you you made it out of the underground with with these formats. You, you skipped this, so so now you know you every, everybody knows you because you're on a huge playlist and it's, everything is cool. But yeah. do, do you have, do you have um, maybe maybe thoughts of helping people out coming on the same way, not even on a label, not signing artists, but if somebody asks you for help? Oh yeah, help. always. I do that anyway. That, that yeah. goes about that goes about saying, yeah, if I just reach out to me and, and, and are showing love and are asking, I will always give them um give them help information, you know? And I'd ex I'd expect it back, you know, because everyone's different. So how important these formats are for you nowadays, what would you say? What the freestyle platforms? The freestyle platforms. I think they've in, in this day and age, I think they're very important. Yeah. I think they're massively important. I think they're some of the most important uh, platforms there are because with me, I'm more of like a stream artist. So like I could release a video on YouTube and it get 
cool, 300,000 views in whatever time, right? But I could then do something like a plugged in and you get millions of views. Yeah. You know? So these platforms are very serious. I think they should be taken seriously. And if people get the chance to jump on them to make sure that they absolutely go crazy on it because it's a massive opportunity. What about the format fire in the booth? You weren't into it, right? Yeah, I haven't jumped on that, to be fair. I haven't jumped on that, to be fair, no. I think it's it was where, for us, where we got... I, I have a um, I have a good relationship with Kenny, you know, with Mad About Bars, with Mixtape Madness. So that's kind of how that came about. And my manager has good connection with um, with Grime Daily. So it kind of just, it all kind of just came together nicely. It wasn't ever like where we were trying so hard to, to sort things out. It happened quite naturally. And this is important for you, right? Yeah. Not, not to making plans, not, 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 not making it look like like a strategy but just making music or just making music man just we, we're surfing we're just surfing on a wave that's just wherever it goes we follow you know as long as it makes sense obviously yeah of course but did, had, had, have you ever uh, cancelled some some things uh do you manage uh, one of these platforms yeah whatever even 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 Uh, it, even other uh, industry business wide things that were on your table and your manager said yes and you said nope yeah uh, I don't know what I can or can't say but I'm going to say it anyway because I don't care but um, <laughs> it was, uh, do you know what? Yeah, yeah 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 this is all your fault we had yeah. a um, we're supposed to go uh, mobos uh -huh. but I think but we didn't end up going uh, that was one of them he was like oh if we should go I said no nah. It's not. It, it's just one of them things. I'm, I'm just not too bothered, you know. I'm not too yeah. bothered about all these big ceremonies and stuff. So there was that, and also the funny story about the mad about bars. I actually wasn't originally supposed to get that. Kenny gave me a um, a one extra freestyle on his radio station. Yeah, but I done the. I did the same freestyle that I did on Mad About Bars on that, and it was just too explicit. So it has to be um, it has to be muted. All the bad words has to be muted, and there was about 30 seconds of just nothing because all the words were muted. <laughs> so he said, "There's no point releasing it. You might as well jump on Mad About Bars," and that's when we got that. Yeah. With this mixtape, I think you 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 put another mark on your career. I'm sure people were loving it. Um, I was happy about it. And honestly, like you said, when people from Germany is the second biggest market for you, I'm sure some of my Spotify streams were also in this because when I when I started listening to your music, I was really inspired. And maybe it's a vibe, like you said, that's what I really like. I appreciate it. Because it's 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 even a little bit different to what's 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 happening around that. It, from the UK, I have more of these artists in Germany. It's it's a little too It's not my style, honestly, from time to time. Yeah. But but what are your goals for your, not the business career, but for your music career? What what is what is the thing you want to really reach to with the music? See, the, see, this goes back to what I was saying. I I don't I don't know. I I really don't know. If I don't want awards, if I don't want ceremonies, if I don't want charts, what do I want? You know, I don't think I've even found what I want. <laughs> It's weird. <laughs> It's kind of all, it's all been such a blur that, and it's all just happened so fast that I really don't know. I really don't know. I think, as I said, when I get to the end of my career and I look back on it, maybe I could figure it out. But for now, I have no idea. That's the one question I have I can't answer, literally. And is this maybe the reason that gives you the, the hunger to be... To keep the hunger, yeah. Yeah, to, to, to you know what? Yeah, a million percent, because I don't think I've found what I want yet. So until then, I'm going to keep working, you know. I'm happy to meet you and hopefully meet you in, in, in Germany for the concert in Hamburg. 100%. 100%. Uh, and it's quite interesting to see how the people here react to your music. But first of all, thank you for your time. It was Thanks great talking me. to you. It was great. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers, man. Backspin. Backspin. Backspin.